where were we? We were about to draw our lovely setup. Now, start with a light pencil, <clears throat> like a 2B or a 4B. 2B is probably the best option. I have a couple that I keep for just such emergencies. And now you've squared out your composition. And you know what you want. You squared it up. And like I was doing with the siding yesterday, my I tend to do fairly balanced compositions when I'm doing stuff like this. Nothing really radical. I could take the heart out of it and have a more asymmetrical thing or put a different kind of an object under the picture like a dark object so that there would be more of a, a swoop but the point of it is right now is of course still life and sighting and things like that so anyway Contemplate my navel for a second, and I'm going to figure this is my square here, kind of mark off my set, my square. And I'm going to use a clean piece of paper, not just a dirty one, because it might actually be a nice drawing that I want to keep or something. Oh, I know what's wrong. Okay. So just gesturally, you're going to sketch out. I'm not sure how I start, why or where I start. I usually think I start with the usually with the largest object. It seems to be what I tend to do, but it it varies. So and just looking back and forth and gathering information on the relationships, the size of the objects to each other, just loose, loose, loose. The first few marks should just be easy, casual, loose drawings. So there's my gesture. You can barely see it. It's so light. Um, now we're going to start refining that composition down a bit. So I'm going to do more of a heart shape the heart shape box and the cup. Maybe give it a loose ellipse around the top. The sphere. See how the, you can see in the photo how the sphere is offset the corner of the cup pretty much halfway. So I'm already eyeballing the uh, relative sizes. Then the box comes up from the middle, slightly to the right of the ball. I think I have this too close probably, but maybe this needs to go out more. So moving from object to object, I'm looking for the relationships of the objects to each other and looking at the composition as a whole. Because it's not just one thing. It's all the sum of its parts, right? It's not just the one object that you're drawing, but everything together and in relationship to each other. This is going to really help if you want to try to draw faces. It's the same, essentially the same idea. When you're looking at a face, the reason people look the way they do is because of the relationship of their eyes to their nose to their mouth and the spaces in between and the relative sizes of things in their spaces in between. So by practicing on real objects that you're looking at and trying to gauge the size and position, you are training your eye and training your hand and training your mind to be able to put things in the right place on your paper. Does that make sense? You guys can unmute and talk to me if you want. Give me feedback. It's nice to have company when I'm drawing. <laughs> so... 
Hey, <laughs> good. <laughs> At least I don't feel like I'm totally alone. So um, now I'm going to start sliding. And I'm, and I put the ball in there for a reason, because I like the small unit of measure. I could use the cup, though. The cup is a good size for a unit of measure. But I'm going to use the ball. You guys all understand the, the concept of sliding now, right? Everybody's with me on that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Ah. No. No, it's relative. It's all relative. So. It's not like an inch or two inches or five inches. It's a unit. So if your ball was one unit, and what else were you measuring against it? Object, like an oatmeal thing or something. Um, okay, so how did you fit like two or three balls in the height of the can? Yeah. That's what it should be, definitely. It's all relationship. So if you had drawn your ball on your paper like this big, you know, like a tiny, you can't even see it on the paper, like this big, and then you wanted to draw a, a cylinder that's three units high, then your cylinder would be that big. So it's all in relationship. It could be this big and the cylinder this big. And that, so that's all it is. So, yeah, you're doing it right. If that's what you did, you're doing it right. Anybody else have a question? Okay. So in my relationships here, and also angles, like I look for the way things line up can be really convenient. If you hold your pencil in front of your face at the angle, you usually have to close one eye to do it at the angle that you see your object. And you carefully pull your hand down to your paper. It'll give you an idea if you're getting in the, at least in the ballpark as far as the angle goes. So this is, you don't have to lock your elbow for this one, but you just have to kind of, and so my angle should go a little bit more like this. And when I hold my pencil there, I can see it goes past the top of the box and clears the picture altogether. It doesn't line up with it, which I thought it was going to do when I first set it up. Um, this is looking for the negative spaces, like this negative space between the box and the heart. It's really important. Or the negative space inside the handle of the cup. I've used these still life objects for years in on-ground classes and I know that handles on cups are one of the hardest things for people to get. So let me come too big or too small. But they are, in essence, a um, reflection or in relationship to everything else. So this, you could use the cup handle, for instance. I could use the cup handle and you see how many cup handles fit across the cup. And let's see, there'd be one, two, about two and a half cup handles across the cup. So you can check your, your measurements within any of, of the objects with other objects that you've already established a relationship with. So this does actually end up being two and a half cup handles wide. But my primary object is going to be my ball because it's the easiest thing for me to use. And I'm pretty sure that the ball and the coffee cup are the same height, and they are. because I've used them a number of times. And they're fairly close together, so it may be like a fraction of a hair shorter than the than the cup visually. So whatever I make the height of my ball, I know that it's going to be the same of my cylinder. So here's my ball, and there's my cup. So I need to make the cup a little taller. And I look at the I tend to figure out where stuff emerges from, it's, not, it's like I, I try to figure out what, where the line of the cup base 
intersects with the line of, or the edge, where the edge of the cup face intersects visually with the edge of the ball. Actually, that ball's too big. I'm going to make it all smaller because I think um, by relationship, I'm going to mess up the sizes of my other things. So looking at this again, I feel, it's just a feeling, but it's a feeling from years of doing it that the ball is really more like this big in relationship to everything else that I can see on the page and on the still life. So let me measure that again because I thought it made my cup a little too tall. Yeah. So now the it's hard to figure, but it looks to me like the cup intersects the ball just about the halfway mark, maybe slightly lower than halfway. And a little to the left on the top. And then the edge of the box is a little to the right. Almost like they're they pretty much lined up right over the maybe a little to the right of it. A little to the right of the center of the ball. Okay. So there's there's my starting point. And as long as I build from one object to a next object, I can use the next object to build another object if I need to. So the box is extends one and a quarter past the ball and on its own it's not a good even measurement no matter which way I go. It's about one and a quarter to the top of the corner of the box. So I'll just have to deal with the uh, fractions. So that's one and a quarter, which puts it right about here. Mm. Trying, to, trying to decide which is going to be the best thing to uh, the best thing to measure off of. Hey, Leanne, you, if you can mute, I don't know what something's banging. Thanks. I, I don't want to mute you. I, when I do that, people get upset. Oh, I'm I'm just going to be looking. I'm kind of looking all over the place for an object that is exactly lining up with my ball, and I'm having a really hard time finding one, except for the cup. The cup does, but the ball is giving everything else is giving me trouble. Cup. Okay, so I can take. Like desperately looking for something that matches. That's un that's unfortunate. Well, I'm going to go ahead and guesstimate it more, and then measure it again. And it's not like the ball has to line up with anything. It's just easier than doing fractions. So I'm going to measure the ball. And of the ball, it's one and a quarter. It's one and then a quarter to the top and a half to the base of the creamer. So here's one. and a half. So my creamer should be here and the corner of the box should be here. As far as I can tell. Oh man, this one's hard. This is a challenge. This is good. I like challenges. Okay. Sure. Yep.
Oh, uh, yeah. It's true. But you could still cite against the computer and use that. It's pretty close. It's not super distorted. I'm getting the same measurements. It's just a little, they're a little smaller. Um, I can make the picture bigger. I can also send you the picture. That would be the other thing I could do. So you'd have it in front of you. You can make it big as you want on the screen. Can we do that? Okay, let me do that. Oh, I've got to go find it. Mm-hmm. You could use the ruler if you want to, but you don't. It's not typical. In fact, what's better than a ruler is a caliper, if you know what I, what that is, like a or like a compass, because you can set the you can set the distance, and that's what that's what I would use. That's what I would use if I was trained that way. But I know I have one. I just, I'm so used to using the pencil. That's what I use. So um, who all wants this? Everybody? Okay. All right. Um, so just if you can type your your emails in the chat box, then I can paste them into the email, and that'll be the easiest thing. Because even though I'm recording it, it won't show up in the recording. Nice email, Michael. It's a pretty big resolution. Oh, wait a second. It isn't unless I make it say so. It defaults to small. And that's not what we want. Actual size is what we want. Yeah. There you go. Sounds good for practice if nothing else. I mean, yeah, we're going to draw from photos sometimes. It's just drawing from life allows you to get the feel of it so that the photo can't trick you. They're tricksy things. So when I'm working with graphite, my favorite pencil is the woodless the woodless pencil, which is also like the world's most fragile pencil. If you drop them, you get nothing but little tiny stubs of pencil to work with. There we go. So I've got myself a 4B, 6B, and an 8B. Oh, I think, no, it's not. Next, The next milestone focuses on shading, where you'll need to do like um, a shading bar. We're not really focusing on shading in this one. We're just focusing on the siding. You can shade it if you want to, but it's not, not part of the assignment. Okay, so let me do this one more time. I got my, my ball. I put the one. The second ball ends up on the highlight of the cup of the pitcher and almost to the top of the pitcher. So that's kind of a good, good relative thing I can use. So that's one. That's two. That's three. And I'm way off. Man. How can I be so off? Second one's to here. The third one, this is supposed to be the highlight on the picture. And this is almost, it's a little bit past the 
top of the pictures a little bit past. So maybe I shouldn't have shrunk my ball. Wow. Oh well, I'm going to work with it anyway. And I didn't measure it very well either. I got a little more space than I thought I did. Okay. So there's the highlight, and the highlight of the picture is right directly above the, this lower highlight of the picture is right directly above the ball. The other highlight's down here, and then there's another highlight here, approximately, not that far up, but here. Once you get the size settled and you're sure of it, and you're happy with it. And remember, you can also turn this upside down if you want to round out the ball a bit more. Hi, Demery. There's the corner and the cup. It's halfway. It's half of a ball height to here. I'm also in the go to meeting if you want to talk, but with the card should give you a better image. So there's one ball space from in my in my view from the edge of the ball to the inside of the cup handle, which looks like it. I'm pretty close to it, so that helps. And the cup itself, I know, is the same height as the ball here. And I already measured this one up here, so here's your cylinder. So here's the trick for drawing cylinders. If you can draw a square in perspective, and thus a cube in perspective. I'm thinking about these going to the vanishing point, so they're slightly tilted in, because all parallel lines go to the vanishing points. If you take the top, the bo you take the box, the square, the cube, and you divide it in half to find the center. So if you have a, a square in perspective and it becomes a trapezoid and you try to find the center and you put the center there and then when you actually do the corner to corner you'll find that the center is actually a little higher up so you always want to try to find the corner the center by going corner to corner and then for each of the corners pieces you want to divide those into three Re regardless of how regardless of how um, how much space is around it? Just look at that one little section. So one third, one third, and then following your same perspective that you used to create the box in the first place, you want to go ahead and divide the box into quarters. You want to get that division line to line up with your edges, because you're going to need those bisected centers. So then you go from the the second line to the edge to 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 the second line. So it gives you a pretty good approximation of what a, a circle would look like in perspective. And from your top box, you can drop it straight down and just sketch out the bottom one or you can divide up the bottom one like the top one and match it up that way. So 
So that can help you do your your circles in perspective. So remember, an ellipse is always a circle in perspective, and it doesn't have a point. So one of the biggest challenges for people just learning to draw is to avoid putting that little point on the corners of their ellipses. No matter how tight it gets, it's not really a point. So you want to avoid actually putting a point in there. It's helpful to draw a, squ a straight line across your cylinder. So you can turn the paper as necessary to get the curve. We all have a natural way of turning, of drawing curves. And it isn't always the same left to right or up to down or back to forth. So turn your paper as necessary to get that, that uh, open cylinder. And again, at the bottom, it's going to be a duplication of this. So if I was actually using a computer, I would just copy this line and put it here so that it's the same. So I want it to be identical up across. And there's a foot on the on this little cup. And the handle is equidistant from the top and the bottom. It's almost round not quite the same. It's near enough, though, the same height as it is width. And there is, of course, a lip on the inside of the cup, so I'm going to draw that in there, too. That helps with the um, preventing the pointiness of the ellipse, knowing that you have to draw the rim on the inside. And in this one, you can erase. You can erase as you need your construction lines because you've already constructed it on the other one with all the dimensions labeled. Here, you can go ahead and erase it and make it a clean line. I'm just going to very lightly sketch in the thickness of the cup because I don't want to outline everything. It'll ruin ruin it if I do that. I just want to give it. Uh, remind myself that there is a thickness to the cup just like there's a thickness to eyelids. If you're having problems getting things vertical, turn your paper upside down. And if you have to use a ruler, use a ruler. I can't draw a straight line. There's no, no shame in that. <laughs> Sometimes I use a ruler if I'm really, really adamant about getting a perfectly straight line. Okay, so let's see. The heart comes out of the left side, top center left of the cup, and the box comes up about out of the middle. So I'm going to measure the edge to edge of the box, which turns out to be one perfect circle from the edge of the box to the inside lip of the heart. So I'm going to use that one first. And the edge to the inside lip of the box, and then we can more easily, uh, you know, uh, uh, approximate. These sizes look like they're the same, and they're too small for me to measure accurately. So I'm just going to assume that they're the same size. They look the same size to me. And that back, that back corner. Back corner is just slightly smaller than one ball from the edge to the back corner. Goes off at an angle like so. You want to keep in mind your perspective angles going to the vanishing point. So the you know big problem is making the tops too too big for what they actually are. So extra measurements is necessary to get that perfectly sized this way. And now the picture. I said that was the highlight? No, that's the highlight. Okay, that makes sense. 
This is the bottom highlight. So the bottom edge of the cup just barely clears the edge here. And it comes about looking at the size of this space here, the negative space here, and the size of this negative space here, top part, so that I can make this the right size. I've made the gesture part, the gesture sketch of my picture quite crooked, quite off its mark. So I'm glad that I'm checking it now and adjusting it as needed. This extends past I would say it covers about half. If I drop a line straight down from the edge of the picture to the top of the box, in both, in both cases, I put it pretty symmetrically in the still life. So in both cases, they pretty much cut this little space down here in half before they come in. And this was supposed to be the top of the picture. How, what am I doing? It doesn't feel right. Let's measure that again. It's one, two, three. That's what it says. So this has to be right here. Because the measurements aren't going to be wrong. It's my eyeballs. And that feels too short. So I'll look at this negative space shape here and the negative space shape here. Okay, so this is actually on the inside lip, not on the outside lip like I was thinking. It's actually on the inside lip, so that, that, that makes sense because it is a little taller. This is the inside of the top circle. Okay, that, that I can live with. I knew it wasn't totally insane. And on the vertical, I'm going to say... The edge of this cup, if I take a vertical up, it fits right inside the edge here. And if I take the edge of the box up, the cup extends a little past it. But being a mad-made object, you might want to turn it upside down to check your symmetry on this part. And even on this part. Because this is not going to be symmetrical. Ha 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 Eraser in full force. <laughs> You're using a kneaded eraser, right? Word of advice, just tear off a little piece of it so that you don't, don't completely destroy the whole thing at once. Just destroy a little at a time. Oh, it's nap time. Got the three o'clock sleepies. So I'm still constantly drawing vertical and horizontal lines in my mind to, to see where things can line up. I can take this well inside here. There's a little tiny overlap, which is going to be more critical as you move forward. 
between the the pitcher's stem or um, whatever they call that and the actual jar. So we're getting there, and we just need to make the heart work. So one end comes to the shadow, the second one comes to the inside edge of the inside of the box, and then there's the width of the box from there, the thickness of the box. So we have one, it's going to come from where the shadow is, and the next one is going to be the inside edge of the lip of the box, and so then we we'll add a little bit to the outside edge. And then this is the shadow here. So you can use the shapes of the shadows just like the shapes of the objects to help establish your proportions and keep them consistent. All right. From above, this meets up, the back of the box meets up with the inside of this handle. And I've pretty much guessed where the handle is. It should be more specific. So I'm feeling like I feel like I need to move to a four a six B for my four B. You want to make sure you don't press the paper too hard, because if you do that, you will make the damage the paper and leave marks that you can never erase. So if you're looking for perfection, damaging the paper is not going to give you that kind of perfection. So from here on out, you can just really look for lines that reinforce your proportions or that you can measure your proportions off of. There's this little detail on the side of the picture. And I pulled that out a little too far, I think. And I've got the picture, tip of the picture coming down too far. I can see now it's more up, it's more level. Which brings this up because this line here angles down. I need to make sure that it's up high enough that it can be a functional picture. And when it gets too busy, just erase it. And these would be parallel. They're parallel to each other, and you can check them in your sighting. The top part is identical to the bottom part. So those are going to be the shadows. Shadow, shadow, shadow. One, two, three. And a little shadow on the side. And then we'll get shadow marks up here as well. So there should be four. I've only got three. Here's the other one. Okay, I've got three now. Okay. That's an interesting coincidence. The ball is equal to this is if this ball is coming out from here to the heart, it's equal to I forgot what it was. Two and a half.
So this is where the shadow was. So the inside of the of the box I can see is hidden completely by the edge of the cup. So the box has to be that deep. So there's the sighting of the three objects, and they seem pretty well set in their space. You can stop there if you want to, but I recommend going on just a bit further, cleaning up the lines a little. Be careful not to press too heavy on these contour lines because we don't want to leave dark edges that we can get to work done that a number of times too. I'm just going to block in the shadow shapes real quick. I have this one shadow. Oops, let me finish this guy here. Up the box. Just show this one. Here's a shadow that's going like this. All right, very good. And then the shadow is about a third of the way down. And it goes like that. And notice how the quality of the shadow falls off as it moves away from the from the source of the light, or the source where they, the the light is cast a shadow. That's super important for determining distance. It's one of the cues of distance is how far it casts a shadow. And then you can lightly block it in your basic fill just to just lightly just to get the idea of to where it is to help you remember. And it looks like what I've done here is I put I drawn something it looks like a bird. Could be a bird. Birds have these really crazy long flexible necks. Uh, I think it's the uh scorpion uh, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. I'm tired. Okay. Oh, this goes out, and this comes back in. Any questions so far? In the milestone two task area, where it says milestone two task. Pardon? Oh, this one for the extra credit? No, we'll post that under um, questions for the professor for extra credit. 
The one you the one you need to do for that needs to be done from life. From from an actual setup, but you can post this for extra credit and get get you a few points. So from here, all you really need to do after this is just kind of block in the shadows and make sure your lines are clean and you're done for this. It's it's not you don't have to go into the shading part unless you really want to. That heart is wrong. I can tell it's wrong. So I'm going to see if I can fix it. You should. It's another thing to do is step away and then come back after a while and you'll be able to see where your errors are a little more easily. Inside the outside edge of the box to the shadow to the inside edge of the box. Okay. So the outside of the box to the shadow the inside edge of the box. Well, that was right. It must be the other part that's wrong. Well, I'm not really sure exactly how high up that point of the heart comes to. And I can line it up actually with this over here. This one's higher up. Try not to use those little short, sharp strokes. That was an accident because my hand is in an awkward position. If you have to turn your paper to make a smooth curve, go for it. I made myself a Mobius strip here. Hmm. Still not working right for me. Hmm. I need to figure out how where that exactly that point of that heart is. Made, the problem is I've made this part of the part too big. The other part is actually correct, or more correct, is the inside of the heart. The upper, this higher edge of the heart is not. This lines up with the inside handle. So there's the problem. If it looks wrong, it probably is. <laughs> You gotta trust your trust your inner guides. Oh, I get a C for craftsmanship, that's for sure. It's really messy. There we go. Now that's making more sense. The angles of the shadows will help a lot with your perspective and sighting as well. So this disappears into here and goes into there. And this comes down here below this point. Okie doke. This is below this corner, but just barely. And I would sketch in this shadow here, which is about a little less than halfway across the 
Let me space the cup between the edge and the cup. And these shadows on here. And you can even put the, the thickness on here, put the shadow shape in here, highlight shape in there if you want. And the shadow on the box. And consider the shadow on the ground as well. Consider your ground plane in this one. You don't have to do that in the sighting one, but you do need to do that on this one. Comes down about three quarters. And then goes off the edge of the structure that it's sitting on. This is a little shadow under here. A little shadow, and this part is in shadow. This part, shadow. A little shadow shape here. A little shadow shape here. And an extra shadow. Heavier shadow here and there. So that's as far as you have to go. Just block in the major shapes and shadows. If you want to go further than that, you certainly can. But I think we'll be doing shading, more shading the following week. Okay. And that's really all I have to show you on this particular one. I'm going to go ahead and draw more on it. And I'll keep it running in Picardo. But as far as the uh, as far as the demo goes, do you guys have any questions? There's only two of you left now. Does that help? No. Okay. Good. All right, Laura. Uh, 